Hi you all and welcome. Today I'll be showing you how to draw an isometric treehouse art studio in the Procreate app for iPad. So grab your Apple Pencil and your iPad and let's get started. Let's start by changing this background color. Click on the Layers panel. Tap Background Color. Here select any color that you like to work from. I'm just going to choose kind of a light blue for now. I will likely change this later. Tap Done. Click on the wrench. Canvas. Drawing Guide. Edit Drawing Guide, Isometric, tap on Grid Size and select 55 if you'd like to match mine exactly, and change the opacity and thickness to your preference. Make sure to tap Assisted Drawing. Then done. Click on the color circle and select whatever color you'd like to sketch with. Click on the brush tool and select sketching, 6B pencil, HB pencil, whatever you like. Make sure your opacity is at 100% and change the brush size to your preference. Two finger tap to undo and three finger tap to redo. Otherwise, you have undo and redo on the left panel. Let's begin by making the box for the treehouse. Draw a line. Here I have 26 and here I have 20. Draw two lines to connect them together. Here I have 24. Draw a line out from this space and connect them together, here to here. Here to here. Remember this is a sketch, so your lines don't have to be perfect at this point. And let's go ahead and complete the box. It looks like we're going to have to move it, or at least I will. So to do this, it's not a problem, click on the arrow tool. On uniform or free form, without touching the blue handles, push outside of it and make sure that you find uh, lines where they connect again. So like for example, there's some for me. It looks like I have enough room, but I won't have enough room if we end up making a roof. So I'll continue moving mine down just a little bit. Right about there will be good for me, at least for now. So now let's finish making these lines and go on from there. Let's begin to design the roof. So if this was 26, 13 should be the middle. And it is, great. Here is nine. Connect these two together. Great. We'll connect these pieces on a different layer. I think I will need to move mine again. So I will push mine up and find those lines again. Oh. 
mine are meeting there and there. Great. Tap on the brush tool to get out of that. I think we'll make a small platform here. About eight blocks out. And cross it over. Connect it. Great. We'll give all of this a bit of a base to sit on. So two blocks down, two blocks down, two blocks down, and connect them. Erase back extra as needed. You can click and hold the eraser tool to get the same brush to work with. Great. Once again, I'd like mine now to be moved over to the left, so I'll click on the arrow tool. You can do this as needed for your picture, and turn off snapping if it gets annoying. Click the lightning bolt and make it gray instead of blue. I think I'll try mine here for now, over just a little bit. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. And now let's add in the roof pieces. So connect this one to this one. If you'd like it to hang over the edge, you can absolutely do that, or just continue like this. Click the line button and edit it as needed. You can connect all of your pieces, each of the corners, to the roof. Tap line and edit as needed whenever you need to. Two finger tap to undo whenever you don't like something and just try it again. First, start by placing your door wherever you would like it to go and make it whatever size you'd like it to be. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer and select Drawing Assist. Since I have 26 across, I think I'll go 10 deep and see what that looks like. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this should be six here, so three, six, great. I think mine's gonna go right about to there, so that's two, four, six, seven down. So 24 minus seven, anybody, anybody? I think that's about 17. All right, and connect these lines together, great. I'd like for my little studio space to have nice big windows all around, so we'll try to add those in. Double check your work as you go. So two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Great. So if I've got ten on each side, to split this into a window, I'd like to go two in for each. And I think that I'm going to have mine be higher than the door itself. You can do the same or you can make yours different, whatever you like. So I'll go about halfway up the door and I'll try to match this. Connect all of your lines together and as you can see I've got crossover there so I'll just have to be careful about that. So two in for me on each of these sides. Two in, two in, two in, two in. I think I'll have this be a long window. And I'll keep the same height. And also go two in for this. So, four from the top. So that's two, four, and then two in. And try to match it up. 
So the height is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So uh, 4 down, 2 across. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 right there. Great. So I'll just follow that all the way across, and I'll figure out how to break up my window in just a moment. And up as well. Perfect. There's going to be a window on this wall and not on this wall because this is where our tree is going to be when we get there. So for me, this one's going to be a little bit difficult, but I will do my best to add it in. In case I would like it to be see-through here on this window, I'll have that window in the background. Not sure what if I'll do that yet, but I'm just going to keep it in mind in case. So from the roof, four down and two in. So two in and then two, four down start there and then 12 so that's 2 4 6 8 10 12 okay and I'll have to stop there and make a little line a little too low double check my work so 4 down 2 in so 2 4 6 8 10 and 12 great so then I'll just follow this all the way through the roof. I know it's a bit confusing. And oops, I'll stop earlier than that. Right about there is two. So two from this wall and then down. But making sure to connect these two. And good. So once again, these are all just guidelines for the windows and doors as well as the walls and the roof. So we don't need to be too terribly precise yet, but we will get there eventually. So here I think we should have guardrails or whatever you'd like to call those. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. As always, you can change your color if it helps you to build these elements. Sometimes it helps me. Uh, but make sure to tap on this layer and use drawing assist because these are going to be the up and down elements. And left to right as well. Up as far as you'd like it to be. Make a little square here at the top by just drawing around and then draw down and here as well. Down one and then over, stop there, that's the wall. And there as well, you can turn as it helps you, of course, and connect these spaces together. Great. Let's repeat this on the other side. So here, as you can see, I wasn't all the way out. I'll just add that in, straight up. Shoo, it'll be right about there, great. Right there, there, there. Connect all these together. So for those of you who are following along with me exactly, let's count. So that's one in, so two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve up. Let's repeat the bar here. So that was one down, one down, hit this part of the wall, one over, one down, connect these two together again, here to here, and then this line here. Great. Now let's do that again. Again, so this is technically one, two down. So one, two down. Add two faint lines here and here if it helps you to remember where to stop. Let's actually start by building in these right here. So here is my faint line, which means I'll start here. And I think we said 12 up, let's double check. So two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12, great. So here is the outside. So let's just start right here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. Follow that up, line over, back. Great, it looks like it's meeting perfectly.
So same thing over here. So this is on the outside, so this is on the outside. 12 up. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Follow it up. Connect, connect, connect. Over. And down. Perfect. Now let's connect these two pieces and these two pieces, and then we'll make the other bars as well. So from here, this is two down to start the top. So two down to start the top. Connect it to this middle line. Connect this one to the edge. Connect those there and the bottom part. Same thing over here, so two down. Connect it to the middle one. Over. Cross. And create the bottom connecting to the middle again. Now for readability, I think it would help to erase back some of these extra lines. So for example, right here, these ones should disappear. So eraser tool, make it bigger or smaller as you need to, and just take out the pieces that don't make sense. So for me, it's those two definitely. Crossing parts of the bars here, which you can't see this one really well right now, and that's okay. We'll take away that part of the door as well. So let's go ahead and hop on over to that layer. Right here, layer three, eraser tool. Take away that part of the door to help yourself with readability. This part of the window. Layers panel, hop back over here, get anything that you missed from that part. For me, that's this right here, so I can connect these two together again. Great. Hop on over to the walls, which is this layer, eraser tool and take away those pieces as well. Whatever doesn't make sense now. That one is the door. So I'll hop back over there. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. Back to the walls and continue. This part can go. This part can go for readability. Here. Here. Erase back any lines that you see that you do not need. Leave these extra lines that we made for the interior part of the studio if you are going to do that part. If you're not, just go ahead and erase those now. Great. Click on the Layers panel, hop back over to that top layer, plus symbol to add a new layer, tap on this layer, Drawing Assist. For me, I have eight blocks between this line and this line. Two in. You can bring your brush size up and down as needed, of course. One over, in, and up, just to this line. Good. Two over from this line, up, in, up to this line, one over, and up. Great. Click on the Layers panel, swipe and duplicate. Now tap the arrow tool and move this to be two over, and it looks like it matches there. 
Great. Two finger pinch to merge these two together. And go through the layers and erase back anything that's unnecessary. For me, that's mostly layer one. Erase your tool and take it away. The door is visible there and there. That one behind these bars will not be visible. Click on the layers panel, tap back on this top layer, plus simple to add a new layer. Tap on this layer, drawing assist. For me, the space here is seven blocks, but I'll just replicate what I did here and see how that works out. So two in, up, one over, up. Try to get the lines exactly. One over, up, two over, up, one over, up, one over, up. Great. Again, tap on the layers panel, swipe left, duplicate. Arrow tool, move these ones over and get them to match up. So here I should have from this one, one, two is where that line should meet, right about there. arrow tool and double check. So for this area, since it's getting a little bit difficult to read, tap on the layers panel, click on the N and move the bar down. Arrow tool to move it where you think it should go. So from this point, one, two, so that's where mine needs to be. And I can erase back these lines right now here, here, oh, not that one. So just here, 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 and here, as well as here. So that one's gonna be behind here, except for this part, and this one as well. Great. Tap on the layers panel, click on the N, and drag the opacity over to the maximum again. For the exterior, for my roof, I would like to have it go over, like an overhang, just a little bit. So I'll click on that layer, plus symbol to add a new layer, tap on this layer, drawing assist to start, brush, and I think I will take mine out about three blocks on all these pieces. So that's one, two, three, you can't see, so I'll just draw a line there. One, two, three. Layers panel plus symbol. Brush tool and connect these spaces together. So one here to that point. One here, to that point, then I will take my roof lines and go over them here and here. Layers panel, hide this guideline layer, and it looks like I don't need it, so I'll swipe and delete it. Here on the roof, I will erase back the unnecessary lines. Tap on this, eraser tool, and erase the lines that are no longer needed for this part. Tap on the layers panel. Move this over.
then check to make sure that the lines you want erased have been erased, like I missed a couple here. So I'll go to that layer and erase those back. Erase anything that is going to be difficult for you to read when we go to trace in the next step. Layers panel, once again. Tap each of these, make sure that everything is readable. Now, squish to merge all of these together. Tap on the large N and lower the opacity to whatever you're comfortable with. Plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer, drawing assist. If you'd like to switch to an inking brush at this point, go ahead and do that now. Tap on the brush tool. Find inking, technical pen, or whatever you want to work with. I'm using a pen for my pen and ink brush set, which you can find for free at Patreon. So here I am using simple ink, and I will change my color to the color I'd like for my line work to be. On this layer, trace everything that is going to be following the isometric grid that you'd like to keep for the final piece. Make sure that your opacity for your inking tool is at 100% and use whatever brush size you prefer for this part. I think I'll do mine magically. When you finish tracing all of the lines that are up and down or follow the isometric grid, let's switch over to a new layer, click on the layers panel, tap the plus symbol, and now draw in the roof lines. As you can see, I changed my brush size from about 10% to something like 6%, just because I wanted my lines to be a lot thinner. And I think it does look much nicer. So I'll bring that line back just a little bit. This one just needs to meet on the point. Layers panel, hide the base layer, you need to check your work, and click on the wrench, hide the drawing guide if you need to check your work as well. It looks like mine is good, I will turn the drawing guide back on now. Wrench, drawing guide. Here I can merge this layer down into this one with the two finger pinch. You can rename this layer whatever you like. Swipe and lock this layer for now. Tap on this layer, tap it again, and rename it to whatever you prefer. All right, let's begin to add in some extra elements, lights, anything else you want on the exterior. Plus symbol to add a new layer, switch back over to your sketching color and switch back to your sketching brush. So for me, that was sketching and 6 b pencil. And let's begin to add things in wherever we want them. For this layer, if you would like for the elements to follow the isometric grid, tap on this layer and select drawing assist. Otherwise, leave that off or add new layers as you need them. Let's start by mapping out whatever kind of light fixture you would like. I want mine to be above the door, and I will draw up to about here. So for me, that's two, four, six, and seven blocks. I will have mine coming out from the wall. So I'll make a little cross here and follow each of those pieces about a block and a half and cross it back over. Now from here, one little line down, once again about a half a block. Try to follow that a little bit more closely. Up and here. 
So this is basically a rectangle, rectangular prism. If you'd like there to be some kind of a box behind it, you can build that as well. Uh, so for me, I will follow this up again and go out oh, just about the same amount in all directions. So that was one block there. Follow this down from about here, one block here. So it's about almost, if not a full half block. Cross it over. It hides behind there. Cross this down. If you'd like to be a little bit further away even still, do about a fourth of a block all the way on the sides, one here and one here. Great. So from this little rectangular prism here, let's go ahead and draw down until you meet this half block area. Same here. Try again with a two finger tap if ever you don't like something. Need these, you can erase back any extra as you need to. And probably right about to there. Maybe a little bit less. Right about to there. And back up. Basically making about the same width here and here. Now for this, let's begin to erase back these extra lines using the eraser tool, of course. So for me, this one's gotta go here, 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 this little piece here, and here, here, oh. and, and then this line here. So from here, with the brush tool, go out about half a block here and about a half a block here to start. There and a little bit further here. Good. Now let's take that down to that line if possible. Looks like it is. Great. And from here, you can do a rectangle for your light or whatever you like. So for me, I think I will draw in some guidelines and then follow this line down to about there. And I think I'll go even a little further to about there. I'll follow this down as well to see where I'd like to frame this up. That's okay, but for this, I think I would like it to be, I guess, more of a lantern shape. So for me, I'm going to have to make things a little bit more complicated, and that's perfectly all right. So I'll go about a half a block out away from this general square. So I'll make a square here to give myself that help. And I'll go about half a block away from that in all directions. Maybe a little bit more on this side. Click on the layers panel plus symbol to add a new layer and then add these in without the isometric grid wherever you think they should be. So for me I think I will go right underneath this area that we made before. I'll go right underneath that with my own. Feel free to play with yours and see what you like. So mine will go there and mine will go here as well. And because I would like it to match this part up here I will Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer, tap on this layer, drawing assist, and fill in those spaces wherever I think they should go. For me, mine is about a little under half a block, so I'll do my best to replicate that, but it doesn't have to be super, super perfect, as long as it basically looks uniform all the way around.
It looks like I didn't finish up this part. So I will actually go back to that layer and finish that up and correct it so that I can keep working. So this line here isn't quite right. So I'll actually just take that out and try again. So it's this one here that is actually on a different layer. So there, there to there. So this one needs to come back. And I need to draw in the back of each of these pieces. So from here to here and here to here. Should be about right. Try try again if you don't get something right the first time. And then change your brush size if you need to. Click on the layers panel and find the lines that you can erase back. So for me, right here on this layer, I can erase these back. Uh, they don't actually need to be in here anymore. They're just for guideline, for reference. And I think with this one, on this layer, it's still not quite right, so I'll try to bring it back a little bit and sort it out. Try to go up all the way to that one, so I'll erase this one back and try it again. And this one is wrong. If you don't like something the first time, just try try again until you get it right. Here, I'm just erasing back this guideline and this one here and any others that aren't going to help me with the final piece. Click on the top layer, plus symbol to add a new layer. Turn on drawing assist for just a moment if you need to do this part and make that kind of rectangular prism shape again. Find your center, or the approximate center, and draw a bit of a string down. So you won't be able to see it and that's okay. But we do know that it's right here in the middle, great. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer, and add in a perfect circle. Place it wherever you would like it to be. I think I'd like mine right about here. Draw in the rest of your bulb. And erase back anything that's unnecessary. Swipe and delete this guideline layer. And pinch to merge these layers together. Great. If you would like to, you can erase back this part here. I think for me, I would like to add in a little bit more to each of these spaces, maybe like a little piece of metal all the way around. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer using your brush tool. Just add it in wherever you think it should be. And edit your line whenever you need to.
switch back over to the other layer, erase back anything that's now unnecessary, and we'll go on. Tap on this layer and turn off Drawing Assist if it helps you. If you'd like to add in little crossbars, you can. You absolutely don't have to. For me, I would like to try it, so I'll tap on the top layer, add a new layer, and connect the lines from here to here, letting the Procreate application straighten up that line for me. Use your two finger pinch to merge these together and let's go on. Less symbol to add a new layer. Let's begin to work on this window. Tap on this layer, Drawing Assist. Here go about a half a block in from each of these lines. Try to keep it fairly consistent throughout. Great. All right, so for me, this space is 15 blocks because I had 16 and I went half a block in on each side. So now if I want to break this into thirds, all I need to do is go five blocks in, make my line, five blocks in, make my line. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Try it. From here, one, two, three, four, five. Try it. For each of these single lines, let's actually make them about a half a block wide in total. So let's go around them here. And then we'll erase that middle line. And for this one, same thing, a little ways out, and a little ways out. And erase the middle line. Good. Make sure to erase all of these extra lines. So we have this as the frame. And we'll begin to add the crossbars. We'll probably do that on a new layer, though. Just keep everything organized. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer and select Drawing Assist. Now let's see what we're working with here. So we've got one, two, three, four full blocks, and then about almost another full block, but not quite. So let's see, one, two, three, four. I wanna call that just about five. If we have five blocks here, let's find about two and a half and go from there. Using the brush tool, one, two, and a half, so up from that line. So let's do the same on each of those. So we've got one, two, and a half up. So one, two, and a half up. All right, so ignoring 
each part up here and up here, up here and down here. This is 10 blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. Let's start by making the inside frame. Same thing here. And one more here. Raise back the extra wherever you don't need it. So for me, that's here and here and here. Before we add width to each of these middle ones, let's add the other cross beams. So for me, since I have 10 from this line, from this point to this point, I'm actually going to just keep it simple on myself and go two apart. So here's the first one, two, 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 great. Same thing here. Now we could add width to these, or we could keep them as basically just thin metal bars for the inside of the windows. It's whatever you prefer. I'll zoom out and see what I think I like here. So here I will test it out and see if I like the idea of widening each of these. If you want to do the same, follow along with me. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on the New Layer, Drawing Assist. You can even lower the opacity of this layer if it helps you. Just make sure you're on that new layer and go on. So here I'm just going to try to go right outside each of the lines and see if I like the idea. So I do like this idea myself. I'm actually going to do it on separate layers, I think, to be able to work with it more easily. All of these are on one layer. Layers panel, plus symbol, tap on this layer, select drawing assist, and add in these. See how they look. Lower your brush size as needed, of course. and raise back anything unnecessary. Same thing on this layer, erase back anything that you don't need. So that's any part where it's crossing. Tap on the layers panel, and this layer where the opacity is lowered, click on it. With your eraser tool, just take out those lines where you don't need them. Click on the Layers panel, tap on the large N on this layer, and bring that opacity back up. For each of these layers for this window, if you are ready to do so, go ahead and three finger pinch to merge them all together. So now we've got our baseline work. We've got the lantern, and I skipped one, so I'll go ahead and merge that with the other part. So here's the window, the lantern, and the baseline work. Great. All right, these look 
awesome. Let's go ahead and work on these windows as well. Click on your Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer, tap on this layer, and select Drawing Assist. Let's start by adding the half block gap here, all the way around each of these. Try to make it as consistent as possible. Erase back any unnecessary lines. Great. Same thing over here. Half a block in. All the way around. And here we can just follow this inside line all the way around. Trying to make it the same width all the way around as best you can. Same thing over here. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer whenever you want to. Tap on this layer, use drawing assist. And let's create our crossbar again. So here the gap is four for me. So that makes it easy. Two. Two. Wonderful. Always count your blocks to make sure that your math is correct. So here I have two, four, six, eight, and ten again. So great. I will just follow this one again for mine to give my little treehouse studio the same windows all the way around. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer whenever you want to. Tap on this layer, drawing assist. Now go outside of each of these, about the same width that we did over here, of course. I think on these ones I'll go outside just a little bit to make it the same width as the crossbars. So if anything like that happens to you, just be mindful of it and try to work with it. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer, tap on this layer, and select Drawing Assist. Go a little ways outside of the lines, trying to keep the same width when you can. Erase back, of course, as always, the unnecessary lines. Click on the Layers panel and Hide and Show to see where you need to erase back, and mine is this crossbar here and here. So I'll bring my brush size down and work on that. Click on the Layers panel, Hide, and Show the different layers. For me, this layer is ready to say goodbye, so I will swipe and delete this layer and hop over to this layer to begin to erase back for these crossbars. Okay. 
This is just for readability as, once again, this is the initial sketch. When we get to the line work, we can be a little bit more precise. But for now, all we need to do is make sure we can see where to add in the line work. For me, I think this is all done. So I can merge together these three layers. I think for mine, because these ones are a little light, I'll swipe and duplicate, then merge these together again. So let's see what we've got here. Baseline work, the lantern, windows, windows. So these windows can all go together for now. Great. Let's begin to work on the door. Plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer. Drawing assist. Look at different pictures of doors online and see what kind of a door you would like to have for your space. If you'd like to follow along with me, let's go. I think for mine, I would like to continue the theme of having big open windows. So I will create a big open window here, but only on part of the door. Two, four, six, eight, ten. For this part, I'll go a full block in all the way around before I start to create my windows. Up here as well. And I think I'll cross two here. Now I've got nine blocks to work with, and this is a little different from the others, but I think I'll keep the same theme. Three down, three down. Use your eraser tool to bring back the lines that you don't want for your picture. Brush tool, draw a line here and here, connect these, one line down the middle, and we'll go out a ways from that and a ways from that, and erase the in-between with a smaller brush size, of course. Brush tool. Draw a line for a little recess there if you prefer. Draw out a little ways from each of these to create the same effect that you have on the windows. Erase your tool to bring back any unnecessary lines and also to take out these lines in the middle. Click on the Layers panel, swipe and duplicate it if your lines are faint like mine and merge it back together with itself. So now we've got our baseline work, lantern, windows, and door. For me, because I don't want to have to add the recess for every other single part of this, I will take out this part and just leave the lines. But if you would like to go through and add the inside part of each of these, by all means, include that. Let's add the door handle. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. If you'd like it to be a long handle, following the isometric grid, tap on this and use Drawing Assist. If you'd like to do a perfect circle, do not use Drawing Assist. My handle is going to be a rectangular handle, so I will use this. I'll, using the brush tool, kick it out just a little ways.
I like the handle itself, but I don't like the placement, and that's okay. Tap on the arrow tool and push it to where you think it should go. I'll zoom out a little bit to see where I think it should be. I actually do like the idea of it on this side, so I'll try to work with it here. It seems like candles are usually lower than you'd expect. So I'll try it right there. Arrow tool to get out of that. I actually think I like my placement there, so I'll keep it. I think for me the roof needs to go down even further, just a little bit of a lip all the way around, so I'll try that. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer and select drawing assist. So for this one, we actually move it all the way over. And for the other ones, we need a new layer. So layers panel plus symbol without using the drawing guide. Draw a line, hold it, it snaps to a perfect line, and do it again. Edit line. Brush tool to get out of that. Your finger tap to undo if you don't like something. I think, I think mine should go a little bit further down. I think I'll consider keeping that myself. If you don't like it, don't include it. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer, drawing assist. Here we can begin to design the window box. It's totally up to your preference where you would like to start. One block in on each side, two blocks out. Connect these lines. Two blocks down. Two blocks down. Two blocks down all the way around. And then connect each of those. So we won't need those interior lines because we will fill them with flowers later. If you want something for it to stand on, you can absolutely add those in. I think for me, mine would be here and you won't be able to see them anyway, so I will skip that part. I think I will add the rim all the way around just in case it's visible underneath some of my flowers. One little line all the way around. Cute. Before we go on, let's add in either a rope bridge or a ladder, whatever you prefer. Layers panel. Plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer and select drawing assist. So here I think it would come out from this post. I think it would just be one block all the way around. Same thing from this post, Oop. right inside the post, I should say. Let's just follow these lines down, like so. And now we can add in cross beams wherever they make the most sense. So I think I'll make mine a little bit wider than these ones. I'll start here, across, over, connect, down, take out the parts that don't need to be there anymore. Start here. Do 
see if that works. Might be too much space. Let's try the other way. Eraser tool to take out the pieces that shouldn't be there. See if that works better. And for me, I think it does, so I'll keep it. If you want to try a rope bridge or something like that, go ahead. I think I would actually prefer this little ladder, so I'll keep it. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer, brush tool. And here is a bit of a tricky part. Let's add in the tree however big or small you'd like it to be. It could be very small, and maybe this is on stilts. It could be very big, and maybe it's more supportive. Perhaps there are two trees to help support the weight of your art studio. Maybe there are even more, like three or four. Add however many trees you would like to into this space. Keep in mind this is isometric, so we'll picture it coming up from this angle. I'll draw a circle, leave the pencil on the screen, place a finger on the screen, lift up, arrow tool and make it follow the isometric grid for what we would consider to be the floor. So I'll pick a corner here. That looks fine. Using distort, drag these until they match all the way around. Arrow tool to get out of that. Arrow tool to place it where you think it should go. I think I will try to do one tree here and one tree here, or one big tree back here, and perhaps another one nearby. Using uniform, you can make this bigger or smaller. Layers panel duplicate. Use magnetics and snapping just to help you find where it should approximately be. If this tree was perfectly straight. Merge these two together with a two finger pinch. Plus symbol to add a new layer. And for me, I'm going to pretend like these are perfectly straight. So I will add my lines in like that for both of my trees. I do think I will do two. So click on the layers panel, tap this layer with the guide and arrow tool to move it over to wherever you'd like to try it. You can turn off snapping and magnetics if they get annoying to you. Mine's on this corner. So for me, I think I'll change the width of this tree and make it a little smaller by using uniform. And I'll put it where I think it should go. I think for me, right about there, so that it won't be in the way of the ladder or anything else. And maybe I'll add one more tree in the background. Click on the layers panel. And on this layer with the other tree, add it in straight as you like and edit line if you need to edit line as always if you need to i think mine's going to go right about there layers panel and hide that guideline and i do think actually i'll show the guideline and move it to make one more tree for myself if you want to do the same, go ahead. Using uniform, make it smaller, or if you'd like to, make it bigger. And for me, this one will be kind of almost off frame, but I will 
click on the layers panel, swipe and duplicate using the arrow tool and snapping with snapping and magnetics, I will go ahead and push it up to help me find those lines. Click on the layers panel, tap back on this layer and add a straight line in to match these as well. Edit your line if you need to, of course. Mine is good right there. Tap on the layers panel, swipe and delete the guideline layer. And if you had to swipe and delete both of them. So we have our trees here to begin working with. Click on the layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer and begin to add in the branches of your trees wherever you want them to go. Maybe your trees are evergreen trees and there aren't going to be very many branches because they've been cut off. Uh, maybe yours are a little bit more wabi-sabi, are going to be kind of thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. I will change my basic shape as I need to and I will add branches wherever I want to and you should do the same. If you would like to, click on the layers panel, tap the large N and bring the opacity down. So for this one, I'm going to start off then here at the top and get a little bit thicker as I go down, changing the shape however I want it to be, um, because it's not going to be perfect this way or that way. It's a tree. So if you'd like to do that as well, go ahead, change your lines instead of making super perfectly straight. Go a little bit outside in any direction that it makes sense to you. So I'm going outside in this one. It's a little thicker down there at the base. And the same on this one. And then, of course, after you do this part, begin to add in your branches. Click on the Layers panel, hide that guideline that we created before. If you feel like you're done with it, go ahead and swipe and delete it. Plus, simple to add a new layer so that you can create the branches as well. Create your branches however you'd like them to be. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's whatever you prefer. So for this one that's in the background, because I want it to cross this, I'm going to add a new layer so that I can erase back the parts that I do not want to include. If you have something like that, go ahead and do that as well to help yourself. Switch back to the other layer and erase whenever you need to. If you really want to change your shape like I did on that one, I'll go ahead and do so. No big deal. Just make sure to go through and erase the parts that you don't want. For example, mine is this one here, which is in the background. So I'll take that part away, making sure I'm on that layer first, and then I'll take that part away. Add as many or as few branches and twigs as you'd like to, and we'll go on. Tap on the layers panel and plus symbol to add a new layer, of course. For this one, let's consider adding supports to the treehouse itself. Now that we've got an idea of the trees in the background, we can begin to do so. Tap on the layers panel, click on this layer, and select Drawing Assist if you prefer. I think I will place them in the parts of the treehouse that need to be the most weight or load bearing. So here on this corner, with the brush tool, 
from about here, draw a line down. Actually consider going one or two in, so I'll go two in. And I'll make it two wide, both sides. So now I need to replicate that. I'll do these faintly to have an idea of what I'm doing on the other side. So I need the bottom. So here would be the bottom. And I'd like it to match this line here, which would be here. So where this one crosses with this one here and here, this is where I need to add this. So I'll make it kind of make believe for now, two by two. It looks like that is not quite right. So it looks like I put it on the outside perfectly all right. If you don't get something right the first time, just try, try again. So here is where this and this meet. Let's try placing it here. So make believe two by two. And I think that is correct now, and both of them are on the underside of the house. So, yes, great. Let's go ahead and all the way down from this point, and all the way down from this point, and from this point. So this area is going to get a little bit tricky. But that's okay, we can work with it. So from here, let's go ahead and erase back the parts that we don't want or need here where the bar is and everything behind this one and here where the bar is here as well and it goes this way so we'll leave these lines to help us with that later add a new layer tap on this layer drawing assist from here and here let's go ahead and draw these lines out and this will be our support beam. And the one on the opposite side is actually not going to be visible from this angle. Oh, make sure you don't go too far like I did. So just go ahead and erase that back. If you did. If you didn't, good eye and good job. Great. So that's that for that support beam. I actually do think I want mine to be a little bit thicker, so I'll raise that back and add it in like so. So that's looking great. I think we'll add one here as well, just attaching it to the house somewhere. And we'll pretend like there's some nice steel beams in here somewhere that are helping keep that weight up. So just for this one, add it in wherever you think it should go wherever it seems right to you. And attach it here to your tree. Let's continue working on our trees and begin to take away the parts that we don't need. Here you can erase this back first and then merge these two layers together. These three are tree layers, so I'll merge them together for now. Add a new layer and continue working on them. Using the brush tool, of course. I think for me, this is a fine place to stop on the trees. So I'll make sure to merge all of those together and erase the parts that I don't want that are behind the house area. 
as well as any extra parts that I don't want. Click on the Layers panel, move this piece over here so you can see everything clearly. If you have any extra pieces, try to erase them out. I think mine are okay now. Click on the Layers panel, hide and show each layer, and erase back things that you need to. For example, here this beam crosses over this tree, so I will cut it out. I think that's the only point that it does, but I'll test it again. Here for this part, I actually don't need all of this, but because I want to remember where that is, for now I'll keep it in. And that's the ladder, it's all right. Window box. Roof edge, roof edge, handle, door, windows, lantern. So it looks like for all of mine, I'm ready to merge them up into the lantern. So leaving out the baseline work, of course. Two finger pinch, making sure all of these are checked and not hidden, and merge them all together. Double check that that was what you wanted to do and then begin to add in the line work. Plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on the brush tool, select your line work brush, which for me was my pen and ink, simple ink brush. Click on the color circle and select the color you've been working with. Tap on the large N and bring down the opacity. Make sure that you're on your new layer that doesn't have anything on it, that you're on your inking brush and your inking color, and trace all of these lines. Use assisted drawing on this layer whenever you need to. I think I'll do mine magically. All right, you all, once all of your lines are traced where you think they're traced, let's go ahead and double check that work and clean up any messes that we see. Click on the layers panel and find the sketch layer, hide it, we will save this layer just in case we need it later. So go ahead and click and hold, drag it underneath the structure, swipe and lock this layer. Keep both of those and keep them both hidden. Tap on the wrench, canvas, drawing guide, and toggle that off so it's now gray instead of blue to make sure that you like the placement of your objects and to make sure that all of the lines are clean and nothing's running into anything else. It looks like mine's good, great. So I'll go ahead and go on. If you need time, pause the video and keep working on yours. Otherwise, let's consolidate the line work into one layer. Click on the layers panel. Let's find all of the ones that we can combine for the exterior. You might want to keep some of these elements separated, for example, the trees, maybe even these parts in the front, just in case you would like to add the interior later and perhaps would like to include that. Otherwise, uh, you can merge them all together, no big deal. So for me, the handle can absolutely merge and the lantern as well. So two finger pinch to merge those together. Always be checking. So that's windows, 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 and part of the roof, windows, the ladder and the beams for support, and here is the trees. So tap on this layer, tap it again, and rename it.
go ahead and merge together all of these layers if you can. You can name it something different if you prefer. Swipe to the right on each of these and tap Group. Close the carrot. Rename this to Line Work or whatever you prefer. Great. You can tap on this layer, swipe to the right, and group these together as well. Hide the carrot, rename the group, sketch, or whatever you prefer. Close the carrot, toggle this off, swipe, and lock this group. Great. So now we have our line work for the exterior all together. Between the sketch and the line work, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on the carrot, tap each of these ends and change it either to linear burn or multiply, whatever your preference is. I'm going to use multiply, so mine is M, M, and M. Great. With each of these on a new blending mode, tap on the carrot to close the group. Swipe left and lock this if you prefer. And here is where we will begin to color the exterior of our artwork. So for this part, use however many layers you prefer, change your colors to whatever you like, or use the color palette that I have provided, and just play with this and have fun. To start, let's actually isolate the Treehouse Studio itself. So pick whatever color you would like to be the base of this for now. It's not going to be permanent but choose whatever color you want for the base of it. And I'm trying to think of either the color of the wood itself or the color of the house itself. Mine's probably going to be a blue tone. Uh, so I'll try this and see if I like it. If I don't like it, of course, it will be easy enough to change it. Make sure that you're on your inking brush instead of your sketching brush and make an outline of this shape, the house itself, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So I'll color an outline on the inside of each of these lines for the Treehouse Studio, and then we'll go on. can move your lines around if you do use the quick shape tool to make perfect lines. Make sure it's on the inside of your line work. For example, this color is not going to be blue later, but I'm just blocking out the general shape for the entire object. To give you an idea of where we are headed with this, I will show you uh, with this small space over here. So once you've got the entire thing all blocked out, drag the color into that space to fill the shape and bring up your color drop threshold if you need to. Mine's at about 98% right now. So draw on the inside of each of these lines edit your line as you need to, and then drag and drop to fill the color. Like so. Keep going until you have this entire space blocked out, and then we'll go on.
So this is why we save this line work to be able to see where this pole should be. And mine is actually falling right behind my ladder. So I will continue coloring in this space all with the same color and we'll go on. When you've got this basically blocked out with color, that's great. Let's go ahead and add another block for the background right behind this. Click on the layers panel, tap on this, rename it if you like. So this for me is just the base of colors for everything else. So I may or may not keep this color, but the different elements are definitely going to change. Tap on the layer beneath this plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this and rename it. Select something like background or whatever you like. So for me, this is going to be the trees and any other elements that I decide to add in. Choose a color, like a base color. So think about whether your scene is night or daytime and go from there. Perhaps it's dawn, whatever you like. Drag the color in there to test it out. That is looking all right to me, so I think I'll continue working with that for mine. Choose whatever color you would like for your trees. Now you can change it. The trees obviously can be different colors, of course. Uh, so I think I'll have a couple that are the same and maybe one or two that's different. Add new layers if you prefer, but either group them together or pinch to merge them at the end, whatever you like. So for me, I will tap on this and rename it to trees or something like that. And this will be a part of the background. But for now, I'm keeping my elements separated just in case I don't like something. And also to make it easier to color fill. All right, uh, color in the trees however you'd like them to be. It's going to still look a little bit sparse, but that's all right. Let's continue adding different elements. So for me, I added two separate trees to do different tree colors. So I think that I will merge them together at this point. If you want to keep yours separate, by all means do so. Uh, but I'm just going to keep mine together. So trees and background for me can go together in a group. And I'm going to rename this to background color. Let's keep going. Tap on base of color plus symbol to add a new layer. Click on this layer and select clipping mask. Now choose whatever color you would like for your either wooden elements or metal elements to be whatever you're going to do for yours. I think for mine, I'm going to do a different, I think I'll do a light wood color to help it stand out from the trees. Okay, great. Add it in wherever it should go, and we'll go on. If you see something like this little edge, you can always go to the base of colors layer and erase that part back. If you create a closed shape, you can color drop easily.
And for these ones in the background, I'll probably end up making them a little bit of a darker color later to help show the difference. Here I see that the tree color is not finished there, so I'll hop back on over to that layer and fill it in. Making sure to get back to the right layer and continue. When you've colored in this part, click on the layers panel, tap on base of color again, plus symbol to add new layer, and it will automatically add a clipping mask. Now this layer will be behind these pieces that we've just colored in. Continue adding whichever colors you prefer. Rename your layers as needed. Use the Ribbon or Selection tool on freehand without color fill whenever you like. Add new layers as needed. Use remove whenever you need to. For example, for these windows, I will remove the interior. That will be the glass later.
Once you have your basic color blocking finished, let's move on to add some leaves for the trees and plants in the flower box if you chose to add one to your picture. For the leaves on the trees, let's start in the far background. So click here on background color, open this carrot, tap on background, add a new layer behind the trees themselves. Choose your basic green color. Once you have your basic color selected, let's just draw some kind of blobby shapes in the background to indicate leaves. Drag and drop to fill the color. Once you have some of these mapped out in the background, choose either a lighter or a darker version of that green, click on the layers panel, scroll to the top, tap on line work, and add a new layer above all the lines. Add in this sort of foreground foliage wherever you think it should go. If at any time you don't like a color that you're using, tap on the layers panel, tap on the layer, click select with color fill turned on and change the color in the color circle to test out different options. Click on this layer, add a new layer, and place the plants where you think they should go. Change the color as needed. Add new layers whenever you need to.
add a new layer and add in the flowers wherever you'd like them to go. Changing up your color as needed. Swipe right on each of these to group them together for now. Rename it if you like. Tap on Window Glass. Two finger swipe right to turn on Alpha Lock. Here, let's add in a bit of sheen to the windows. If yours is a nighttime scene, perhaps instead you'll add some lights inside, but I'm just going to add some streaks to indicate that there is shine on the windows. And vary the size of the streaks if you are doing a scene. And let's keep going. Click on the Layers panel, tap on Background, plus symbol to add a new layer, and here try to find a brush to add some kind of variance and texture in the background. Perhaps Cugnani with maybe a wood color or something else, and see if you like it. If you don't like it, just take it out and try again.
I think for me, I might stick with the brush I've been using and perhaps make these with outline work and more opaque. I think there should just be some extra something back here. Tap on the Sawyer tab select and move this around and find a different color, whatever you prefer. Click on the large N, bring your opacity down if you prefer. Add these in if you like them. If you don't like them, just skip this step. Rename this layer if you like. Swipe right on all of the clipping mask layers to group them together. Include base of color, tap group, tap on the carrot to close the group, rename this whatever you prefer, plus symbol to add new layer, tap on the large N and select either linear burn or multiply, whichever you prefer for shadows. I'll try linear burn first. For shadows, instead of picking a color like black or gray, try to choose something that is related to your piece. So here I have a lot of blues, so perhaps I'll choose a dark blue or maybe a dark purple or something in between. Try out different things and see what you like, and we'll begin to add shadow all over. Tap on the layers panel, tap on the large LB or M, whichever you have, and drag your opacity for this layer to the left to your preference. So I'll try 30%. That's looking a little bit better, but maybe I'll bring it up just a little bit. 35, 34. And I think I'll change my color and make it darker purple. And test out a few more options before I decide. And you should do the same. Add shadow wherever you think it should go and we'll go on. Use the shadow color as well to create textures wherever you'd like them to be. Change your brush size as needed. Before you add your shadow, determine a light source for your piece. 
So for mine, I picture the light coming through this angle, but this side of the house will have the most light. Click on the wrench and show the drawing guide whenever you need to. For example, I'd like this shadow to basically follow the line of the house. And I'm trying it like this, but I might change it. Turn off drawing guide whenever you prefer.
Once you think that you've got all of the shadows for this part finished, click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add a new layer. Same thing, drop the opacity down to around 35%. Linear Burn, multiply whichever you were using. You can rename each of these layers if you like. So for me, this one is Shadows. And for me, this one is Texture. Change the brush size and opacity as needed and add texture wherever you think it should go. Click on Foliage, plus symbol to add a new layer, tap on the large N and switch it to Linear Burn or Multiply, whichever is your preference. Change this to 35% or whatever you're working with and continue. Be sure to rename a layer if you prefer. symbol to add a new layer, tap on this layer, rename it to texture or whatever you prefer. Tap on the large N and switch it to linear burn or multiply and once again change it to the percentage you prefer. Add the textures wherever you want them to be. All right, you all, sometimes you go through all the motions and you decide you just don't like something and that's perfectly all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the parts that I don't like and try to redo them. You can do the same if you prefer or if you like what we've been working on so far, go ahead and keep it. Click on the layers panel, hide the texture for the foliage, hide the shadow for the foliage. Zoom out with your two finger pinch to make sure you've got everything taken away and we need to take away the background ones as well. Click on the layers panel and here on shadows and textures. 
Let's try to take away just the parts we don't want and try, try again. So here, eraser tool. I think I will switch to calligraphy, monoline, and take out the parts I don't want. This is the shadows layer, so those are the ones we're looking at. For example, I might be able to use the ribbon tool on freehand with no color fill to take this part out. Arrow tool to scoosh it away. Create arrow tool to get out of that. Move around and find the pieces you'd like to take out. For me, that's these right here. And these back here. As well as the texture, but we'll come back to that. Click on the Layers panel and switch to Textures. Take away the remaining textures. Great, now let's try this again. Click on the Layers panel, plus symbol to add new layer just to keep this element separated. Tap on this layer and rename, whatever you like. Tap on this large N and switch it to Linear Burn. Tap on background color. Press and hold this layer, let it jump in the air, and drag it right above background leaves. You can rename this to background tree leaves or whatever you like. Click on the brush tool. On the left, scroll down until you find organic, snow gum. Change the brush size and opacity as you prefer, and try it out. For this one, place a finger on the screen to get your eyedropper tool to collect that color back to the color circle. Tap on this layer and select Clipping Mask. There should be an arrow pointing down at the background leaves. Zoom into this space and try it out. Click on the Layers panel, tap on the large LB, try out different blending modes and see what you like. I'm going to choose screen for mine, but please pick whatever you prefer. Tap on this V shape to close that group. Click on Foliage up here at the top. Open up this carrot. Tap on foreground leaves, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer and select clipping mask. You can rename this if you prefer. Tap on the large N and select whatever you had preferred before. Place your finger on the screen to get that color back. There's mine. And try this out and see what you like.
perhaps a larger brush size here in the front. Two finger tap to undo whenever you don't like something and just try it again. For this one, I'm going to try a different blending mode. So click on your layers panel, tap on the S, and switch it to linear burn or whatever you prefer. And this might work out better for mine. Perhaps at a much lower opacity. And those ones are getting to be too big for my picture. So I'll two finger tap to undo and try a bit of a smaller brush. You know what you all, this is working out way nicer for my picture, so I'm going to keep this one. If you preferred the other style, please stick with that. Click on the layers panel. Tap on foreground leaves. Plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on the large N and select screen or whatever you prefer. Tap on this layer and select clipping mask. Now there should be an arrow pointing down. You can rename this as well. Add in these brighter leaves at a higher opacity wherever you prefer them to be. Perhaps at a smaller brush size. Here I've lowered the brush size to seven and the opacity to 60. And I'm just stamping a few here and there to indicate a little bit of light is getting through, but not a whole lot. Tap on the layers panel, tap on the S, and drop the opacity if you prefer. I'm going to try mine at 70%. Click on the layers panel and two finger quick pinch to get it back to the largest size. All right, you all, this design is working way better for me, so let's go on. Click on the layers panel. Let's go ahead and do that with all of these. However, select alpha lock for each of them. So two finger swipe right or tap on the layer and select alpha lock. This one, that one doesn't really need it. This one, this one, and this one. So this time, instead of using linear burn or screen, let's just switch between different colors. So I'm starting on this one, which is in the far back. Zoom into that space, grab the original color, Tap on the color circle and select something different, maybe darker, maybe lighter, whatever your preference is. Increase the brush size as needed and the opacity as well. Just to add in a bit of texture to these areas. Two finger tap to undo when you don't like something. For me, I want to switch this more to a kind of blue color. So I'll try that and see if I like it. And I will drop the obesity. Now this won't show up too terribly much, so add it as much as you prefer and let's go on. Let's do the same on the next one. Switch it to a kind of blue color and try it out.
Like I said, these aren't going to show up too terribly much, so once you have it, move on. Click on the Layers panel and select the next one. It'll be about the same color for this one, so tap on the layer, select that layer, and add it in. Change your brush size and opacity as needed, of course. That one's not showing up quite enough for me, so I think I'll switch to a lighter blue and try again. Last one. Switch to it, change your color to whatever you prefer for shadow slash texture, and add it in. Great, let's go on. Tap on the flower layer, plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on this layer and select clipping mask. Change this one to linear burn, or whatever you prefer. Tap on the brush tool and select whatever you've been using for inking, mine simple ink. Zoom into the space, click and hold to get that color to the color circle, and add it in wherever you prefer. Add a much lower opacity if you prefer. And do the same for each of these. Grab the color and test it out. If it doesn't show up, choose something darker and try that. Change your brush size and opacity as preferred and add in these little bits of texture wherever you'd like them to be. Same thing on the next one, and just keep going through them all. Click on the Layers panel, close this carrot. You can swipe and delete these if you did not use them. Plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on the large N and switch it to screen or add whatever you prefer. Click on the color circle and select a light bright color. Using that same brush, Try out different opacities and brush sizes and see what you prefer. Click on the layers panel, tap the large A or large S, whatever you chose, and lower the opacity significantly. I'm trying 35%, but I might change this. 
add your highlights wherever you think they should go. This is going to vary per picture depending on whether it's night or day and which direction your light came from. You can click and hold this and drag it underneath line work exterior if you prefer to leave it there. Tap on this layer and select rename and name it what you like. And let's keep going. Change your brush size and opacity as preferred. Tap edit line as needed. If you get extra marks like that, just go in and erase them and keep on going. If you don't think something's going to show up too well in a particular area, just skip it. I like the way that looks on mine, so I will keep that and I'll add it to the rest of them. I think I'll stick with just the top areas. Add some to the trees if you think it looks good. I think I'll leave mine be. And for me, mine's getting pretty close with the highlights. Personally, I don't want to add too, too many. All right, you all, when you've added as many highlights as you'd like, 
let's begin to add some life to our pictures. All right, you all to sketch, add a new layer and choose a bright color and whatever sketching brush you prefer. I've chosen sketching 6B pencil. Add in your character or characters wherever you'd like them to be. For me, I think I will add a cat somewhere along this railing, perhaps a bird in the tree. So here I'm putting the hips of the cat, the back hips, and the front hips. And I will put a head here. Paws will be here in front, keeping it steady. Or fold it underneath. That might be better. And then kind of hanging over the side to get to the thing. And I think that the ears will be pointing kind of forward, uh, like it's watching something, and perhaps I'll add something in. Tap on the arrow tool and make your character larger or smaller as needed. Mine just needs to be a little bit smaller. Thinking of it in relation to the door or up here. I think mine will be fine right about there. So I do think I would like to add a little bird or something over here. And this is going to be quite a small bird. So it might not be super obvious in the final result, but I'm going to try it out. So a tiny bit of a neck there is what I'm missing. And then add the little head. A bit more of a circle. And just keep trying until you get it right. Use your ribbon or selection tool with no color fill to resize or move your pieces around as you prefer. I think mine's going to go right about there, perhaps be a tiny bit smaller. Great, when your sketch of your characters, whatever you're going to add, is finished, click on the Layers panel, plus simple to add a new layer. This is where we're going to do the color blocking. So tap on this layer and rename it to uh, Color Blocking Characters, or whatever you prefer. This is your sketch layer of your characters, so if you would like to, you can name it Sketch Characters. Tap on the large N and bring the opacity down. Make sure you can see. Begin to add the colors to your characters, whatever you prefer. Just make sure that you are using your inking brush. So for me, that is pen and ink, simple ink. And I'll choose whatever colors I prefer. You should do the same.
When you have the color blocking for your characters mostly done, click on the Layers panel and hide the sketch layer. You can use the ribbon tool on freehand with no color fill if you need to adjust them any further. Click on the Layers panel plus symbol to add a new layer. Tap on the large N and use Linear Burn or Screen or Add, whatever you need for your picture. So for mine, I need either Screen or Add to add some features to the black cat. I'll choose my lighter, brighter color. I'll drop the opacity significantly and I'll rename this. Add highlights or shadows wherever you need them to be. Click on the Layers panel, tap on this new layer, and make sure Clipping Mask is selected. You should see that little arrow pointing down. I'll bring my opacity up a little bit, but not too much. Change your brush as needed. I'm switching to inking and technical pen. Grab up your color, go back to your other layer, and add or adjust things as needed. And continue. When you've finished adding your highlight and your details and everything else you want to your character, pinch really quickly to get back to the largest size, or finger tap on the screen to admire your beautiful work. Great job with this, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know what you thought. See you next time!